What's good YouTube? Underworld6667 here. Yes, you can tell by, you know, what I've set up here, we are going to be doing an Insector deck profile. But as usual, I'm not going to go through the whole deck and tell you I'm playing three of this, three of that. Uh, everything is in the description bar, so if you don't want to actually hear me talk about Insectors, you can just check the description bar. You may see something that you don't know about, and that's why you want to watch the video. Hopefully, I'll be able to cover everything that's sort of different in my Insectors versus yours or whoever you're playing. Now, as we all know, this deck slightly resembles Perfect Circle in that it continuously goes around. Everything works with each other. This works with this, 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 so on and so forth. Everything's sort of a, a round table of awesomeness. It, it all works together. And slowly but surely, this plus this will kill something. This plus this will make a uh, exceed. This plus this will kill something. Well, this plus this will actually search for this, which will then over and over again, and it kills, it kills, it kills. Now, one thing that we have done is we have incorporated a new Insector into the mix, and of course that's with the new set as Insector Ladybug. Now, of course, Ladybug is going to be very important in this new lineup because now you have access to a lot more things. Now, let's see what the problem is. The problem with this deck, of course, is that dreadful uh, effect veiler that everyone loves to just throw down on your cards and negate them. Now, that's what we're trying to get rid of in this deck. Make it so your opponent, technically playing this is a neg one. Let's not stall ourselves out and make sure that our opponent is able to say, yep, you now also will be screwed because you have a 1000 attacker in face up attack position and you're going to be SOL. So we're trying to take that away from this deck and make it not as much of a problem. Now as I just mentioned, uh, we're going to look at some level 5's with our very favorite Ladybug. Now of course as you know, you play your Dragonfly, you equip Ladybug, you get rid of Ladybug making 5 which then brings out Centipede, which then you equip, get rid of it, make a five, and possibly search for this or another Dragonfly, uh, depending on what your circumstance is. Um, in a lot of cases, I want this as quickly as I possibly can. As you guys can tell by the use of, of course, let's see right here, boom, boom. These two cards are very important in this deck. I would say even so that. Pot of Duality gets me to search out my plays. It allows me to play ahead of the game. It allows me to take my time. It's not a deck that is supposed to be so aggressive. I hate aggressive decks. They're unnecessarily aggressive. And you could have controlled the game instead and made it a lot better for yourself. So that's why I play Pot of Duality right there. Now, of course, Armageddon Knight. Armageddon Knight's own sole purpose. Get this in the grave. Get this in the grave. Maybe get this in the grave just for later because, you know what, attacking your, life, uh, your opponent's life points directly is kind of cool. Plus, I don't know if you knew, that's 1,700 attack. That's a pretty beefy card. So, by that, we're going to be looking at... Not so much getting him into the graveyard anymore, because you know what? A lot of people are going to be happy about this. You don't have to play these two lovely gems, not her in three, and not him in one. You don't have to play these guys. The only reason I use these two is it's a first turn setup, so I can put him in defense mode, so I can search out this guy later, or this guy. You know what? It's not meant to be exceeding all the time making Zenmans and making Leviathans and making Acid Golems. I don't think it's necessary. I don't think it's necessary for you to spend hundreds of dollars to make this deck. I tried to make it as low value as possible by putting in Insector Hornet as pretty much the only big card in there. I know you guys are going to say that there's a lot of good stuff in there, but you know what? Insector Hornet will probably be the most expensive thing other than that tour guide. The tour guide does make it better, don't get me wrong, but it's not going to be necessary for you to actually play the game and play it well enough that you need that card. So let's move on. We're special summoning these two with the ladybug, we get rid of it for our very lovely level 5 exceed monsters. Now of course we have the old Tyrus and 
Adrius. And then we've got a wind up Arsenal Zen Moa. And we've got Insector Exostag. Now, you guys won't know what he does unless you've been actually reading up online what the new cards do. But let's go through it. These guys kill monsters. These guys kill back rows. These guys take your opponent's monster and goes, Heh, thank you. Pretty much what Exector Extag does. Uh, two level 5 insect type monsters. Hmm, I wonder if we can do that in Insectors. Once per turn, you can detach one XYZ material from this card. Two, target one monster your opponent controls, or in the graveyard, equip that target to this card. Take their JD, take their BLS, take their Red Eyes Darkness Metal, take their whatever, it doesn't really matter. This card gains attack and defense equal to half the original attack and defense of the monster equipped by this effect. Let's face it, when you're facing off against big huge dragons, you do not, I repeat, do not want to have nothing on your side of the field that can take care of two dragons at one time. You take the dragon, you attack. That's pretty much what it does. You got a 2200 beater right here. Hopefully you can do enough plussing. Hopefully you can do enough control to make it so it's actually a good game for you. Not to mention the fact that this can now go into quite a number of things as far as taking care of monsters like gel and duos. You don't have to worry about, you know, screwing around with the back rows as you'll be able to see in a little bit. You can just worry about the front row. You're only worrying about the front row. Front row is very important in this game. If you really are concerned about back row, bam. You're going to instead finish off with these two, and then a dragonfly in hand, and then sink for like maybe a Zen mains in defense and spend a hundred and some odd dollars. Instead, you're going to worry about the front row with the uh, hornets, fine, and then you can kill the back row. Of course, why am I saying that you can kill the back row so easily? Don't your opponent have traps that can be activated? No, of course, because you're going to play three of these bad boys. Royal Decree. Now, Royal Decree, very important in this deck. Let's face it, you only want to be concerned about maybe having an effect veiler problem. You don't want to have to worry about fiendish chains in, in the back row. You don't want to have to worry about bottomless trap holes. You don't want to have to worry about your opponent playing regeki breaks and this, that, and the other. You want to be able to stop him right off the bat. The ability to play this on the end phase, very important. You know, like, how many times has uh, a Royal Decree been played on you and then you go, damn it. <sighs> My traps are going to be live during your turn. Your traps are going to be dead during mine. That's the whole point. My traps are going to be live because I'm going to insect or hornet, sometimes, my own Royal Decree. Once I get rid of your back rows, do I really give a crap? No. I'm going to worry about my, you know, front row people. I'm going to worry about your monsters. I don't need to worry about your back rows. I don't need to have that problem. I also want to worry about your monsters by playing tons of traps. Uh, I've got, of course, you got the Tarantula, you've got the Bottomlesses, you've got the Solemn Judgments, you got every single access to pretty much every beefy trap in the game. Now, the cool thing about uh, this deck is it has a lot of support. Let's face it, Darks have a lot of support. Insectors are Dark. Darks are very important in this game because you have Allures, you have Erratic Epidemic Viruses, Deck Devastation Viruses, and because these guys now give you access to level fives. I hate to tell you, but um, let's see. That's dark. That's dark. That's above, that's 26. So you can eradicate our epidemic virus. You can deck devastation virus. Let's face it, if a lot of people play FTKs at your locals, you want to have access to those cards. You don't want to have to play a dark world deck where you grapha and that's all that you can do. Let's face it, it's very important. Let's move onwards. Going into this play, once again, you play him, you get Effect Veiler. This is where I was talking about Effect Veiler being sort of unnecessary, unnecessary to worry about because you don't want to have to leave this onto the field while, you know, protecting it with a slew load of traps when you get one MST and then you're screwed. What you do, you pop him out, pop him back. There you go. Gen X Ally Birdman. You have now got a Dragonfly in your hand. Your opponent has pretty much neg one and effect Veiler. You can use him, you can abuse him, you can leave him on the field and let him die. Who cares about a Birdman? Nobody. They're like three bucks, maybe a dollar, I don't know. But 
let's face it, that dragonfly, very important. That's like 90 bucks. Not really, but still. Um, the other thing that uh, you may notice, um, we actually found this out from one of the kids that are at our locals. They didn't have access to the Hornet. They did not have the funds for the Hornet. So he was just playing things like this, things like this. Uh, he was able to get one of these because they're pretty inexpensive compared to Hornets. So he just had these and he would continuously bring out, you know, the combo. Don't ask me why he was doing this. He just liked to, you know, overlay for like Leviathans and that kind of thing. Then he started playing some craziness like this. Okay. You pop that dragonfly back in your hand. You don't have to search for dragonfly now um, with centipedes effect. You can search for something else. So these now are in your hand. You have this out on the field. You have multiple options here. You can over either overlay, at which point this doesn't activate and go and get removed. It goes to the graveyard, so you can use your uh, dark arm dragon, which is once again less expensive because the common version is now out. Or you can overlay into things like this. This is uh, relinquished on drugs, okay? It's an insect relinquished. Your opponent has a monster on his side of the field. You go, hey, I want to suck it up. Boom. You got rid of that 3,000 attacker. You got rid of that big, huge 2,800. And the best part about it is, is this is going to be destroyed. This is destroyed instead. How can you go wrong? You have a lot of access because you needed a dark tuner and you needed an insect type monster. You don't want to have insect type, insect type monsters with low attack on your side of the field for no apparent reason. So the insector deck has a lot of options when it comes to being played in different ways. You don't have to be aggressive. You don't have to use, you know, sabers and, and swords and bows and arrows and all that kind of stuff just to play a deck. You just need some common cards. These are common, common, common. That's like, what, a dollar? These are common and rare. That's an ultra that never really took off, so it's not even that expensive. This is common in the new set. That's rare. These are come out in tins. I mean, wh what do you guys want from me? There, there's like nothing in this deck that's that expensive. That's common. That comes super. This is common. That's a common. That's a common. This is common. Do I have to continue? Do you guys really want me to say a staple, 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 all the commons? Anyway, but that, that's what I'm trying to say is you, you guys don't need to have the most expensive deck just to play this game. Let's face it. Let's stop complaining about playing the game and how expensive the game is. Let's just have some fun. Play your insectors the way you want it to play. And don't make those binder blenders. Thanks, guys.